In the Bas van Steensel lab, we investigate the structure and function of chromosomes. In this paper in Cell, we report a new approach to study chromosome structure in single human cells. Chromosomes are made up of DNA, the genetic material that dictates how our cells should function. In this video, the DNA will be represented by this red string. Inside each cell, the DNA is packed in a ball-shaped structure called the cell nucleus. Each tiny human cell nucleus contains two meters of DNA. If you would enlarge the cell until it has the size of a kitchen ball, like this one, the nucleus would be roughly the size of a tennis ball. And within that tennis ball, there would be about 20 kilometers of string. So you can probably imagine that this needs to be really tightly packed to fit. And that is what we are interested in. How is the DNA packed within the nucleus? And does every cell do it in the same way? Or is it done rather randomly? To address this question, we focused on the DNA that is located at the edge of the nucleus. This edge is called the lamina. The lamina is somewhat similar to the rubber wall of this tennis ball. By knowing which parts of the DNA are touching the lamina, we can learn much about the overall folding of the DNA inside the nucleus. So how do we find out which parts of the DNA contact the lamina in a single cell? We designed a method that works roughly like this. At the inner surface of the lamina, we introduce a kind of molecular paint. For this, we use a genetically encoded paintbrush, an enzyme that we borrowed from bacteria. In reality, we don't have to open up the nucleus to do this, and we don't have to remove the DNA. That's just for the purpose of this video. So let's put our DNA back in and imagine it has been there the whole time. After the inside of the nucleus is fully painted, we dissolve the cell and remove the lamina. This leaves us with the DNA, which is now marked by paint on every part that previously touched the lamina. We then carefully unravel the DNA. We can now see which parts of the DNA were in contact with the lamina. By means of a series of molecular biology tricks and powerful DNA sequencing machines, we can precisely identify each of these painted regions and visualize them on a chromosomal map. Actually, we already reported this molecular painting technique several years ago, but previously the method was not very sensitive. It required about 100,000 cells for each experiment. That meant we could only get a rather blurry, average picture of the lamina contacts across all those cells. But we were interested in the way DNA is packed in single cells. Are the contact points of the DNA and the lamina the same in every cell, or does this vary a lot? We therefore modified the method to make it so sensitive that we can reconstruct a map of lamina contacts from a single cell. We have used this new, extremely sensitive method to study several hundreds of individual cells, one by one. And this is what we have learned so far. It turns out that about 15% of all DNA contacts the lamina in virtually all cells. So these seem to be fixed contact regions. You could say that they are the structural backbone of the DNA within the nucleus. Next to these fixed contact regions, there are hundreds of flexible contact regions that are associated with the lamina in some cells, but not in others. We also discovered that most lamina contacts involve quite long stretches of DNA. This indicates that these contact regions are more like Velcro or zippers than like buttons. And finally, we noticed that there seems to be some sort of coordination between separate flexible contact regions. Here's what we mean by this. It appears that certain DNA regions tend to contact the lamina in synchrony. So if in one cell region A is connected, region B is also connected. And if region A is not connected, region B is also not connected. Here we show this principle for regions that are close together. But it can also happen in regions that lie quite far apart on the same chromosome. How this coordination works and why it exists is still a mystery. Taken together, these results help us to understand how each cell nucleus in our body can contain two meters of DNA, and they suggest an important role for the lamina as an anchoring scaffold. 
Our new technology to map the lamina contacts of DNA in single cells creates exciting opportunities to further unravel this fascinating aspect of fundamental biology.